Cavalcade of America, presented by DuPont. History is studded with the names of those who have dreamed fine dreams and helped transform them into great realities. One such splendid transition is now taking place in the state of Washington, where the genius of American engineers is making the dream of many a Northwest citizen come true by transforming 1,200,000 acres into a garden spot. The Grand Coulee Dam owes its beginning to a great number of forward-looking people. Naturally, in such a huge undertaking, there are many stories about its background and beginning. One of these stories will be told in this evening's Pont Cavalcade. And in the telling, the only character actually portrayed will be that of Rufus Wood. Such people whose energy and vision are helping to make a dream a reality are led forward by the same ideals that inspire the research chemist as he works toward his goal. The goal described in the DuPont Ed, better things for better living through chemistry. As an overture, Don Voorhees and the DuPont Cavalcade Orchestra play a popular favorite, I'll See You in My Dream. of years ago in America's Pacific Northwest, a giant glacier blocked the Columbia River on its way to the sea. That mighty stream, forced to find a new outlet, cut a chasm 600 feet deep, two miles wide and 50 miles long. Many hundreds of years passed, then the ice melted, and the river returned to its original channel. So it was that early settlers in the state of Washington found the dry riverbed, a long, deep valley which they named the Grand Coulee. The DuPont Cavalcade moves forward. It is July 17th, 1918. Our scene is a freighter, a struggling community not far from Wetchie, Washington. 
Rufus Woods, publisher of the Wenatchee Daily World, comes briskly down Main Street. He greets a man we shall call Abraham Waters, who leans listlessly against the side of a two-story wooden building. Hello, Abe. Hello, uh, Ruth. What are you doing, afraid of? On the way to see a certain well-known lawyer. You mean Joe, huh? Uh-huh. Well, he won't have no news. There's no news in these parts. Dust. Dust and more dust. Powdered soil to the wheel hubs. That's all the great coulee of the Columbia River gives us. Oh, there's worse places, Abe. Where? No acreage for grazing. A man can't raise a grub stake. You can't live on sagebrush, can you? <laughs> you seem to be staying here, Abe. Well, what else can I do? You don't think I like it, do you? You do, you plumb loco. I'll tell you what to do, Abe. Come over to Wenatchee someday. We'll talk it over. I never get nowhere. See you again, Abe. Yeah, come in. Oh, Joe. What's the news? Read your paper. You print all the news. Yeah, but I'm stuck for an idea for that front page column of mine, Joe. That's why I came over. All the babies and gardens and such stuff will run out. You're loaded with ideas. Give me one. Uh, you can't print what I'm thinking. <laughs> Come on now. I'm fed up, Ruth. Stung with a bug that wears down every man out here sooner or later. What does a country like this promise anyone for the future? Unless we get what we need. Yes, but this is a country Oh, that... bunk. Columbia River roaring through more than a million acres that aren't worth a pot of to blow them to Hades right now. And look at this office. What's the matter with it? Eh, take down one of my law books. Pick out any one of the lot. They're all loaded with dust. Blows in off the coulee of the Columbia River, through the cracks in our window frames, gets all over the place. Well, you can't walk down the street without loading your shoes. This country can't grow, handicapped like that roof. What we need is a dam. That's it, Joe. A dam. It's the only solution. More than one man thought of it before. Yeah, there's a small chance we'll get one. Why not? Yeah, dam's cost money. Hundreds of thousands. Millions, even. Well, then why not go after that much money? Look out of this window. Miles of useless acreage that can be made fertile by turning the Columbia into the biggest irrigation project the world's ever heard of. You're right, Ruth. That land could be made fertile and we could have plenty of power, too, if we had a dam. A dam's what we need here. A dam's what we'll go after. A dam for the coulee, the Columbia Harness. Quick, give me a pencil. I'll write an editorial that'll start things humming around here. That editorial and the newspaper articles that followed stirred the entire state of Washington. In the years that followed, many men cooperated. A group which included Jim O'Sullivan, Gail Matthews, Winter Prowell, John Mooney, Dr. Whitby, David R. McGinnis, Rufus Woods, and many more, as well as organizations in Portland, Seattle, Spokane, and other centers. It is 1933. Opinion in the section is divided as to whether the Grand Coulee Dam is a myth or a possibility. Feeling is running high between the two factions. A crowd of men have gathered on a corner in Wenatchee. Are you folks, please? Please stop talking. We can't get anywhere if we all talk at once. Speak one at a time. All right, Abe, you're always complaining. What's on your mind? Ruth, I'm again the whole business of building the dam. I lived here for 30 years. What little I got at all, I took away from me. The crazy brain scheme, trying to dam the Columbia. You can't harness that river. She's too big and too strong. Hey, you know what Judge Steiner said? I seen the letter. He wrote, "Dam up the Columbia." Very bad, Munchausen. Now our department. <laughs> yeah, that's what I say too. And if the Columbia could be dammed, it'd probably be a lake where the homes are now. The whole thing's got no sense. And I'm a Guinness. Yes, no right. Somebody gone loco. You're Baron Munchausen, all right, Ruth. Well, if I'm Munchausen, I'm darn proud of it. Remember, Joe, that day in your office? I remember, Ruth. Look here. The idea isn't so plumb crazy as some of you think. A.P. Davis of the United States Reclamation Service says that we've got the greatest damn site on Earth. Ah, uh, what do you and Jim O'Sullivan and your gang know about dams anyway? Well, uh, we ought to know, Abe. They got a regular university on dams with books and charts and reports and pictures, all the dams in the world. Yeah. And what comes of all those surveys? 
The sum total of nothing. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Wait a minute. Look at the government surveys. That's what Homer Galt doing in March 24. And he's one of the outstanding engineers of the Reclamation Bureau. There's the Willis T. Batchelor report. And our own Senator Dill and Governor Martin are interested, aren't they? You can't harness the river. It wastes time and it wastes right. money. Right, right, right. Oh. A dam in the coulee will bring life to thousands of thirsty acres. Fertile fields will be born. There'll be thousands of fine homes where now there's nothing but, but sagebrush. Oh, he's crazy oh, out of his sense like the rest of that gang. We mustn't lose faith when we really started. It's time to fight all the harder. Not give ground, but move forward. Now, what do you say, neighbors? Oh, that's good newspaper stuff. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't make sense. It's a dream that's busted. It sure has, Abe. Come on, folks. No, please. Hey, John. Oh, stay here. Please stay here. Oh, let him go, Ruth. Let him go. I hate to. Yeah, you won't change their minds talking. Especially a one-track mind like Abe Waters. Yeah, but they don't understand. Well, we know that, all of us. But you can't make them see it. So save your strength. I got news, Ruth. Good well. news. Washington's on the job. We aren't going to forget this July 27th as long as we live. Joe, wh what are you talking about? Sixty-three million dollars have been allotted for the Grand Coulee Dam. You're not kidding me, are you? There was a report made in the Senate today. Then it isn't a dream. Work is going to start. There'll be work here for thousands. The whole coulee will be changed. Come back to Abe Waters. Washington's back of our idea. The dam's coming true. There were plenty of skeptics who felt that the dream of a huge dam to harness the Columbia River was an impossibility. But those who believed in it continued their efforts to make new converts, while engineers sat down and reasoned. In a temporary office of the dam project, one of the head engineers is talking to a newcomer. Oh, hello, Tom. Ah, so this is your office, huh, John? Well, it'll do for the present. Boy, you've tackled a big job. We know that. It'll take years to finish and cost plenty of millions. Ah, but it's worth it, Tom. It'll reclaim a country. I'm glad I took part in it. Look out of this window. Nature's working on our side. Nature? What do you mean, John? Oh, Mother Nature herself. You may not realize it, old man, but she's been working for years to set the scene for this job. You see those banks in the west? Yeah. They're solid rock. So are the banks on this side. Move off the surface gravel and sand, and they'll make perfect abutments. We'll put up a cellular coffer dam to hold back the river. How long will that dam be? 4,300 feet, four-fifths of a mile. What? Mm -hmm. You said it was a big job. We may be wrong, Tom, but we figure it's the biggest of its kind in the history of the world. Boy, but how can you go about it? Well, we'll build our copper dams into the river from each side. When the concrete foundation is finished on one side, the water can run over that. Then the center section can be closed by building cribs on dry land and floating them into position. Uh, sounds though you had it all figured out. Oh, yes, yes, we've surveyed every square yard, built a model in detail. Well, when the copper dam's finished, we'll turn the river into a new bed. Turn the river out of its course? Until the big dam is finished. Why? Then we'll swing old Lady Columbia back into the course she's been using for centuries and fill up our lake bed. Uh. We'll build a trestle and a railroad out over the site we fill the big dam. We'll carry concrete. We'll dump it right from the course. And save both time and money, huh? That's the idea. Great. There'll be a huge belt conveyor system, the biggest thing of its kind, to carry off the earth and rocks. The job's too big for trucks, and the depth of the sand will fill them up. Uh, sure, I see. There'll be a big building on that hill there to mix concrete in. A belt conveyor will carry the gravel, and the mixture will be controlled by a central switchboard. We'll build homes for the workers. A boom town. Mm, call it that you want to. We'll build an electrical plant so the river can furnish us with power. An electrical city, A eh? city of homes men will be proud to live in. It'll have its own local government, hotels, its own stores, police and fire department. Not a chimney in it, Tom. Heat, light, hot water, cooking. All done by electricity. Talk about your old boom town. Well, they were nothing beside this. The 
the DuPont cavalcade moves forward. Three more years pass. It is August 1936. There are 5,000 men at work on the Coulee Dam project. Thousands more are at work back of the lines and in the woods, in the steel plants, the truck and tractor factories, the cement plants. A dream city has become a fact. What was once a sweep of rattlesnake-infested sagebrush is now throbbing with action. Huge cranes swing their dangling arms. A modern bridge spans the river, connecting Coulee Dam, the government city, on one side, with Mason City, the contractor's camp, on the other. People from all over the country have arrived, watched, depart in awe. It is afternoon. Three men stand watching the work. That makes a glorious picture, Joe. More like a miracle, I'd say, Ruth. And do you remember when 5,000 people made their way through the dust and heat of this damn site, including those 18 congressmen who were on the committee? You bet I do. So do I. <laughs> I remember what you said to them, too, Roof. You said, now, congressmen, all we want is a slab of concrete across that river. Yeah. Well, dog my catch if that slab of concrete ain't going in. And what a slab it is. Four-fifths of a mile long. 550 feet high. And 500 feet wide at the base. Yeah. They're tying up the old river. Well, she ain't been tied up yet. And if she is, she can break loose. I ain't counting my chicks till the eggs are hatched out. We don't know what may happen. Uh, still pessimistic, huh, Abe? Well, nothing can stop it now. All it takes is time. When it's finished... Hey, it's hey look over there. Where? Up there on the east side. Something's wrong, I can tell that. It, it looks like the start of a landslide. Hey, if those tons were to come down... They won't let that happen. Yeah, but it doesn't look good. If that dirt breaks loose, it'll cover up hundreds. Spoil long weeks of labor. They won't let it break loose. You can't tell. Oh, shut up, Abe. Well, you can't keep monkeying with nature without coming to trouble. I've known that from the start. Hey, Ruth, come back here. I'll be back. Stay where you are. Don't get nearer that east hill. He's gone clean loco now, Joe. He can't hold up a landslide. Oh, he's gone. 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 Hello? You're in charge here. Can anything go wrong? The East Hill looks tricky. If it starts acting up. John! How does he look, Tom? Bad. We've tried everything we can put our hands on. Nothing seems to work. We've got to do something. All right. Call the men off that section. Hey, Buck! Okay! Get the men off the East Hill and stop working that section. Okay, Chief. Now, now what do we do? Come on in the office, Tom. We've taken every hurdle and stride so far, and we'll add this one to them. Come on in, Rufus. All right. Don't let this fuss get your goat. We'll find the answer before long. Well, you know what it means if that hill starts to slide, John. It'll bury the work set up at the bottom. It'll block the whole work. You're not giving me news. Wait a minute. Grace, get hold of Carson. He's up at the mixer. John. Hold your horses a while. Hello? That you, Carson? Yeah. The East Hill looks slippery. Got flag, Chief. All right. Call up the men at the base. Are there any trucks down there? Yeah, two. Get them out of the way. And don't send any more concrete until we iron out this mess. You stick right where you are. Right. If those men at the bottom... There won't be any men down there. You'll get them all out by... Oh, it's starting to leave already. Take a look at the hill. There's a spot near the top... John! John, she started to go! Hello? Carton speaking. Slide hasn't hurt the dam any. Good. Find out how the men are and call me back. Why can't I think of some way of licking that thing? A bulwark! No, no. The hill's too big, Rufus. Brush it away. Well, guess we're licked for a while. No, there's some way we can do it. And it's our job to find out that way. We can't drag off the top. That'd loosen this. Yes, yes. Hello, hello. Hello, Chief. Carton again. All the men free of the slide. Nobody was hurt. Right. All safe. Thank heaven for that much. Hey, I got an idea. Yeah? This couldn't have happened at the North Pole. Oh, now, now don't try to be funny. I'm not kidding. I mean it. The ground would be frozen. Get it? The ground would be frozen. Yeah, I get it. And thanks. By thunder, he's got it. We can set up an ice dam. Freeze that east hill up solid. Keep it covered in the daytime so the sun can't melt it. That's a great idea, Carson. We'll have no more landslides now. <laughs> The 
engineers drove pipes filled with refrigerant through the toe of the cliff. This froze the soil and checked the slot so that work was soon resumed. Whistles screamed once more. Tons of concrete were again run out on the trestle and dumped into huge forms. Tourists flocked from all sections watching engineering history in the making. One day, a young man pushes his way through a throng who are watching the work and enters the reclamation office. Hi, neighbor. Hello. What's on your mind? Looking for work? No, not the kind you'll offer. Well? I'm working at a gas station, but I've been thinking some lately about what you're doing. Uncle Sam's spending millions. Well, I'd like to make him some money. Make it firm right out here. You think he'll take to the idea? <laughs> well, I, I can't see why he wouldn't. Uh, just how would you do it? Oh, well, that's simple enough. Grandstanding. Grandstanding? Uh-huh. What's that? Well, you know how it's human nature to stop and watch a steam shovel at work. Well, we'd put up some grandstands and set sightseeing and proper. Look now. Look out there, them folks watching. Hundreds of them in the broiling sun. They ain't comfortable, are they? Perhaps not. Well, they would be in a grandstand, sitting down in the shade, and I'd be the barker. You know, same as the circus. I could load them with facts. Let them know what we're doing. Give them the dope on what they're seeing. Hmm. That may be an idea. Maybe. Huh. Neighbor, it's massive. It's it's gigantic. Colossal. That's the word I've been hunting. The darn thing's colossal. Well, do I handle a barking? Uh, I can't answer that question. But I can tell you this much. You've brought us a real idea. for spectators were erected at Cooley Dam, so located that visitors could sit in the shade at two main vantage points and watch the work, while lecturers explained the most important parts of this giant engineering project. One day, Rufus Woods and his friend Joe, in a crowd of people sitting in one of the stands, listened to the lecturer's voice through the loudspeaker system. Ladies and gentlemen, I've tried to point out some of the details of this stupendous construction job this colossal engineering feat. Now let me tell you how big this job is. Just a few comparisons. He's a good barker, all right, Joe. New bit he is, Ruth. This dam, when it is finished, will be as high as a 46-story building and as long as 14 ordinary city blocks. Four ships the size of the Queen Mary could be placed end-to-end -end along the top if the engineers wanted to. <laughs> the dam will contain 11 and a quarter million cubic yards of concrete masonry. That's about four times the volume of the Great Pyramid of Egypt. The dam will weigh 23 million tons. If the concrete were heaped on an ordinary city block, it would rise more than two and a half times as high as the Empire State Building in New York City. It would build a standard paved highway 16 feet wide from New York to Seattle and return by way of Los Angeles. The dam itself will be three times as high as Niagara Falls. That's all for this time, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you. Hey, there's a kick in that, isn't there, Ruth? Ah, there sure is. The greatest job ever attempted. Somehow it, it seems human to me. <laughs> I'm foolish, I guess, but I could go out there and pat that dam. <laughs> uh, hello, Abe. Well, hello. Hey, Waters. Why, you old diehard. What are you doing here? Oh, come out a couple of times a week. Uh, well, I can't keep away somehow. Yeah, it gets into your blood, doesn't it, Abe? Like a rattlesnake's bite. Well, do you believe now they can harness the river? That they can build a great lake that'll give us the water to turn waste into gardens? Well... Say, Rufus, I, I wish you'd do me a favor. Well, if I can, I'll be glad to. Could you get me a job working on that dam? Why, Abe? Well, I'll try. I'd, I'd just like to be certain I had some hand in building this dam. You see, it belongs to all of us, and, well, sir, it's the greatest thing in the world. Today, the Grand Coulee Dam is half completed. The dream many men and many organizations worked for has come true. In another three or four years, the wheels will be turning out power, and one unit of irrigation after another will be opening. 
men of imagination using the tools given them by science have made possible the Coulee Dam. This evening, DuPont is proud to add their names to the distinguished roster of the Cavalcade of America. The largest man-made structure for more than 6,000 years has been the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt. History says 100,000 slaves labored under terrific physical punishment for 30 years to build it. Today in America's northwest, the Grand Coulee Dam, a structure three times as big, is being completed in much less time by men who do not have to endure any of the ancient hardships, thanks to modern engineering and chemistry. Chemistry, you ask? Yes, in a great many ways. For instance, explosives. DuPont explosives are helping construct the world's greatest dam. Hundreds of tons of dynamite, several different types for the wide variety of blasting conditions faced by the Grand Coulee engineers. And on the downstream side of the dam stands a wooden coffer dam to divert the water while the main structure is being built. When the concrete is set and the temporary structure has served its purpose, dynamite will remove it quickly with great savings of time and money. Cement. Chemistry helps make all cement. Millions of tons are used in Grand Coulee. And the fact that it dries properly is due to chemical ingredients which hasten this process. Probably without cement, there would be no Grand Coulee Dam. And without the contributions of research chemistry, there would be no modern cement. At the 1937 peak, Grand Coulee uses 50 carloads a day. And rubber. Modern rubber used in many forms by engineers in the building of Grand Coulee is strengthened by DuPont chemical agents called antioxidants. The largest belt conveyor system ever built carried mud, dirt, rocks, even rattlesnakes to canyons far away from the site of the dam. It had to be tough to stand that terrific grind, and rubber chemicals helped make it so. Then there is the rubber used for electrical insulation and in the all-important drill and air hoses. This rubber, too, is made stronger by chemistry. Chemistry serves Grand Coulee engineers in many other ways, ways that even they may not realize. In helping give strength to sheet steel, beams, piling, cable, and wire. For into steel go chemicals made by DuPont to help give it just the right qualities for the job it has to do. Chemistry even helped protect the huge dam itself. For when a landslide threatened Grand Coulee, as you heard in this evening's story, engineers used DuPont ammonia to freeze the slide shale and check the slide. And the drinking water of thousands at work on Grand Coulee is made safe by chlorinating, a chemical process. I could give still more specific examples, but these illustrate how research chemistry serves in the march of progress. And progress is the goal of the research chemist, that you and I may enjoy, as DuPont expresses it, better things for better living through chemistry. <laughs> of Destiny, the story of David Rittenhouse and his contributions to many sciences, including astronomy, will be the subject of our broadcast when next week at the same time, DuPont again presents The Cavalcade of America. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>